Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. As well as the CMLL 91st anniversary show, which I always thought was on a Saturday, but here we are on a Friday. Mask versus Mask four way, Valiente, Euphoria, Hesheseiro, and Espinge. And also the main event, which is the biggest thing for most of the people listening to this show Chris Jericho against Mystico. So Jericho back in Arena Mexico, facing off against Mystico. It's the main event. Apparently, there are some people who are upset about the fact that that is going on last as opposed to the mask versus mask four-way, but I don't know, Filthy, I kind of get it for the same reasons that we mentioned when it came to making money earlier on in the show. This is the biggest money match, and I'm sure they are expecting a lot of people to sign up for their premium YouTube service, CMLs, that is, to watch that match. Well, Mike, I hate to say it, but um, like, can you name the people in the four-way again? In the four of Valiente? Because, be, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's Valiente, Euphoria, Hesheseiro, and Espinge, which, again, you know, compared to mask matches of the past or some of the big mask matches, you know, your Viano against Blue Panther or, you know, La Sombra against Mystico or whatever. Hold on. You know, whatever this, is, this is the match that's in place of those? Well, I would assume. I mean, that is that this would look if Jericho and Mystico were not on the show, I would assume that this would be the main event. Surely, a mask match this, would be the main. This event. This is that show. This is yes, that is. show. The show that always has the the killer blood feud in the main event where a guy loses his mask. Oh, That's yeah. Uh, I mean, I think Mystico and Jericho should be the main event. Those are all four fine wrestlers. But my point was that you mentioned the match, and then I didn't even remember who was in it. And I could have told you that Jericho and Mystico was the main event from the people I've seen online that know more about Lucha Libre than me. It seems as if that's the match that's been getting the most attention from the fans. So, of course, I mean, the Lionheart, it's not like he's, you know, been doing a ton of tours down in Mexico over the years or lately. So, of course, him being back in CMLL against... None other than one of the 10 best professional wrestlers on the planet in the main event, Mystico. I mean, that's a fantastic match. Fellow MLW roster member, double champion. Yeah, got a question for you. Yes. Is Who do you think is going to be the mystery partner for Kevin Owens? Because in the past, you know, he was kind of teamed up with Cody Rhodes, who it won't be because Cody Rhodes is in the main event against Solo Sokoa. And the other man in that crew was Randy Orton, who was on Raw for the past month or so. Do they treat this as kind of his big return to SmackDown? Is that who it's going to be, you think? I would think so. That was immediately where my mind went was because you want to kind of reintroduce him back into the picture. And again, he made veiled threats to Cody, you know, well, I shouldn't say veiled threats. That's where my wrestling brain went. He sat on the couch and said, Cody, I'll be there for you. I got your back, which to me means I'm going to kill you and turn on you at some point. <laughs> and let's Owens and Orton together to me are perfect. And them as heels, them as thorns in Cody's side while the bloodline is doing bloodline things. I would like that. <laughs> I would actually like to see that. So I don't know if they're going to go in that direction or not. But other than him, who's has anybody been out for a while? I can't think of somebody who would be ready to jump into that spot. No, I mean, you could always bring in Sami Zayn for a pop, right? Mm. But I mean... I'm not wasting that on Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Like, no offense to them. But, you know, and that's the other thing with getting Owens and Orton together is you know, fooling the fans here. You know, they they probably have put out most of them, of their heads, any threat of Cody. We saw Kevin Owens not hit Cody in the back of the head with the belt and team with him. So the more you can kind of take that out of the fans' minds, which you could do here with Theory and Waller, who are two guys who we've been waiting to see a turn on, you know, one or the other now for a while. And I have a feeling that's going to be coming here real soon because... That pay-per-view, Bad Blood, is in Atlanta. It's hard for me to believe 
that Austin Theory, because they've teased this for so long, is not going to go full babyface on Grayson Waller here in the lead up to that show. And then that's when you finally have their match together. Am I crazy for thinking that? No, I mean, it could be that. It could be them <laughs> surviving as a team <laughs> until the pay-per-view. And then, you know, maybe by hook or crook, they somehow get a tag title shot and then lose there. And then, you know, there's the big breakup. But, I mean, that has been going on since Mania, essentially. They won the belts and then were immediately threatening to break up and go singles. So it's been a long time coming. It's <laughs> like... The fact that I think it's got to be coming soon, although I've thought this for months, is that the, they went back essentially to being a team last week. They like got back on the same page. And if that continues on for another three or four months, my head may explode. <laughs> I'm going to make your head explode here because I'm going to go through some of what happened on NXT last night. I've been talking here. And, hey, look, if you want the full wrap-up on this show – don't worry, Brian is going to be losing his mind on the next Brian and Vinny show. Trust me, when they review NXT, I'll get to the reasons why here in a little bit. But first match, they, they open up, which actually they open up with Trick Williams in the parking lot, get into the building, it's 1230. And then they show Julia get into the building, it's 230. And then Jordan Grace shows up, it's 4 o'clock. And every time they showed somebody showing up, there was Jada Parker in the parking lot with a wooden baseball bat waiting for somebody. At no point does Vic Joseph ever say anything about it. It's just everybody showing up, even though they've made it completely obvious that she's trying to swing that bat on somebody. They went right into the first match, which was for the NXT Tag Team title, Axiom and Nathan Frazier defending against the Street Profits. They actually showed a graphic with everybody, all of the announcers on there. So there, Brian, that was for you, including the new guy, Blake Howard, who is now taking over for a very, very pregnant Kelly Kincaid. So all the best of luck to her. The match was good for the time that it went, but it went less than eight minutes, Tom. And the Street Profits hit that electric chair blockbuster. I forget what they call it on Frazier. And that could have been the finish. But then Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, and Jacob Fatu hit the ring and laid everybody out. So in one way, it was kind of disappointing because... Those two teams are really good, but considering that the match was supposed to be Wentz and Trey Miguel against Axiom and Frazier, and you not only got the Street Profits, but then you get the Bloodline in to lay everybody out, I thought that was a thumbs up. Cool. I think ahead of uh, the move to the old CW Network, too, it's important to get stuff like this happening on NXT. It's important to get these kind of big name surprises that you're not necessarily expecting along with the people that they bring down and do advertise in advance. So, I think it's a great move. I'm like I'm along with Brian here. I really like watching this current iteration of NXT. You know, it's not like you're not guaranteed to get a flawless match every time on a show. No, but, but it is the a show's entertaining. Show. Yes, yeah. it's it, it is a it's wrestling university. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, that's I it's hate like you. I loved I love the original NXT, right? Like basically the holdover from FCW. You had some of the most talented guys on the planet. You had like Rollins, Owens, Zayn. All those guys are there at the same time. Cesaro, right? So it's tough to match that 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 feeling but this show's like more fun to watch you know it's it's wacky a lot of it, times it, but yes definitely that's, character that, driven. That, that, that's what makes me enjoy it well it's one of the things is there's a bunch of fleshed out it's, characters and sometimes the problem is there's characters before their their wrestler i mean we see that with their entire women's division we know who sol ruka is we know who jada parker is we know who kendall gray is like we know who these people are and what they are for as much as we talk about the generic blondes and all that sort of stuff like we know who they are they're just they're not great in the ring yet but you do get an idea of who these people are going to be hey guys did you love this clip 
If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.